Hello, I'm Retro Jules. Well, my holiday seems but a distant memory. This was the island of Menorca and we went for an eight mile walk along the coast, which is quite a rugged, jagged, muddy path, which goes right round the island and the whole island is just one fossilized coral reef. But it was a really pleasant island. The weather was good. We did get hit by a storm. And that was the storm that caused the floods in Mallorca, which you can see from this island. And all night we had almighty thunder and lightning. Nothing like you get in the UK. And it was quite incredible. And had quite an impact on the island of Mallorca. But it was a beautiful stay and a really good break and a rest and the idea of this walk was to get out to the lighthouse in the very very far distance have a drink and come back not knowing it was eight miles round trip and it would seem that the locals don't like you to poop where you shouldn't but eventually we got to the lighthouse we had beautiful sunsets looking at the mountains in Mallorca and my favourite sunset was this one. There he is, filthy little triangle. Take that. Two tears up and I'm bullying. It's shot bounces. Trouble is, can't afford to take another hit from that triangle. Where's it gone? I know it's there any minute. <laughs> what a superb blind shot. Well, quite some time ago, obviously by the garage, actually a long time ago, I bought the Conqueror. I tried it for a few games as a stock tank. Dreadful, and I thought, I do not want to play this tank the way it is right now so i said to myself well retro why don't you just free xp it so from that point on i was just saving free xp to unlock the packages and then lo and behold in update 4.6 with all the buffs and nerfs i went into my conqueror and magically all the packages were unlocked and I had a Super Conqueror turret. I was good to go. And I thought, well, that saved me all that free XP. It was something good to come out the buffs and nerfs for me. And I thought, I need to start playing this. So as I said, I have stopped playing light tanks. And I don't think it's helped with the matchmaking, but I'm just doing my bit. But actually, it probably sounded that I was a little bit sad not playing my light tanks, but I've been playing light tanks for a very, very long time. And I thought, not only should I have a change, but I think you guys deserved a change in the style of tank that I play. So it was time to start grinding towards the Chieftain. So this is my tier nine Conqueror. And I must admit, I am quite enjoying it. I've got it equipped with a toolbox, vents and vert stabs. I did originally have a large spool liner on it because I did find that I ended up being a little bit of an artillery magnet, especially if I played hold down and stayed too long in one place. And I thought the spool liner might help with that. And actually in the games, it did help keep my crew from getting injured, but didn't help with RT. After all, a direct shot from Marty is going to do the damage that it does. So I then thought, well, actually, the gun is good on this. 
and put vert stabs on. And I think why I'm getting on with this heavy is because I can auto aim in it because it is accurate enough. The consumables I carry on this currently are a large repair kit, a small repair kit and a large first aid kit. I always carry two repair kits and a first aid kit. I never carry fire extinguishers on any tank. I just take my chances. I'm only using the large consumables because I had some free ones to use up. So normally this tank would have two small repair kits and a small first aid kit. Now the crew on this tank, I really can't remember where they came from. Oh, a Trinity. I want to take that Trinity out. I think they may have come from my Churchill, but then I don't know what happened to the crew I had in the Carnarvon. I've completely lost track. I've had this tank sat in the garage for a long time, trying to free XP the packages. The crew that I've got in this tank have currently got six cents, repairs, brothers in arms, and they're training in track mechanic. Now, if you guys have got any ideas with my consumables, or perhaps some skills I should have at this stage, then do let me know if you think there's a little a better setup that I could have. But it seems to be working for me. I am enjoying going to different parts of the map for different reasons. Bearing in mind, always being a light player. Not playing light, I've been playing fast mediums, which pretty much are light tanks. But now I'm playing a relatively slow, quite well armoured on the top, hull down style tank. And I have found out with this Conqueror, it is not a bully. You cannot bully anybody unless you are hull down. It's kind of a tank of two halves if you like. The top half, hull down the turret, is amazing. But if you get caught out in the open and anybody gets a shot on your hull, it is going to go in. So I kind of find that I find this tank, I don't know, I don't know if this is the right thing to say, but more defensive. I find it's more a tank for stopping the enemy advancing and then advancing when it's clear rather than advancing on the enemy and trying to, oh, there's Artie. Oh, nice shot in, rather than trying to bully them. Well, it looks like we've got this game pretty sewn up. But I'm going to make a mistake in a minute. It's not a bad little game. I've said to you my games have been quite mediocre lately, and this game is probably quite typical of the games I've been having. But I have been playing back-to-back -back Conqueror games and if my conqueror has been out of action, or still in battle, because I've died, which happens a lot, then I've been rolling out my Centurion Action X. And this is where the mistake is going to happen. Somewhere out there is a Maljan. Oh no, maybe it doesn't happen yet. I'm trying to take shots on the T-57. Oh, nice ammo rack. And it's tracked. Come on, another shot in. Oh, don't know where that went. Let's advance. Now, really, I should be slightly more to the left. I am out in the open here. But these tanks are right on the edge of my detection zone. So I don't think the heavies know I'm here. But, on reflection, I should have just stayed left and tried to keep hold down. I am out in the wide open exposing my paper thin hull to the world and if anybody gets a sniff of me my 158 health isn't going to last long and there's the Maljan and I take a shot I get away with it and then it's right on the edge of my detection zone and I'm not really sure what I'm trying to prove it. Okay, I tracked it, but I'm out in the open. That shot was going to expose me. Why didn't I just leave the Maljan alone and get into a hold down position where I could then try and keep it tracked? 
That was a bit stupid. Caught out in the wide open with a tiny bit of health and a very thin chassis. Kind of needlessly died there, but we won the game. 31,000 silver, it was okay, but with a few missions, 3,000 damage, 2,000 assisted, 1,000 blocked, and a very decent 6,700 XP with those missions, and a class 2 mastery as well. Well, obviously, driving slower tanks is going to bring you some really dull videos because I can't cock up my driving. I'm not driving stupid fast light tanks that I can't control. So you are not going to see any driving accidents in the heavies. Just wonder if I can get across here and take a little bit of a shortcut. I've not tried this before and there's probably a very good reason why I haven't. <laughs> oh no. Bollocks. Well, I'm really sorry if you found that gameplay a little bit dark. They are quite gloomy maps. So this bright, snowy map should make up for it. This was one of those games where momentum was the key. And what I quite like about this is because I'm in my Conqueror, I'm going left. I never play this side of the map until the very end if I'm chasing tanks down. So it's quite good as a thought process for me to think, well you're in a different tank, which way are you going to go? Where are you going to go? And we have a really nice split on our team. And amazingly, no light tanks! Hurrah! Never thought I'd be saying that. The trouble is, when I was playing light tanks, I also liked to be the only one, or perhaps one of two. So I knew that my team were depending on me, and hopefully benefiting from what I did. But when there's three, four, five light tanks out there, what difference am I going to make? And that was one of the reasons one of the other reasons I stopped playing the light tanks this year, because I just thought, yeah, I'm just, just, I'm just one of a number out there, and it's going to be right up to Christmas. So it was a really good time to change. Well, it would appear that there's nobody here. Now that light tank, sorry, medium tank, both of them are E6 would have lit us up on the way. So these guys really must know we're coming. And I am naughty, I do still do these auto aims, but playing this tank is getting me out of the habit. Because it aims quite quickly, and it's quite accurate, I still can't resist just snapping a quick auto aim and seeing if I get away with it. Right, well their team really hasn't advanced at all. We've advanced very quickly on both flanks and we are penning them in. So this could be one of those classic games where you turn around and say if you try and defend the base, if you just sit at the cap, you will lose. And I like the confidence of being able to pop up with my 10 degrees of gun depression knowing that my turret is virtually bulletproof and putting shots in. Don't aim for the upper glacis of a 103 retro, it is going to bounce. That's it, side scrape. Is that tank playing? Oh, well, doesn't really matter, it's not playing now. And the rest of them are cowering round the corner. Get up on the bank so you can play it hull down. Or just come round the corner and stick a nice shot in. Or oh, the poor Tiger P just to the right. Doesn't really stand a chance, but there's a Conqueror which could hold me back. Ah, oh, ricocheted off the top, trying to go for a Capola shot. 
and we keep pushing and the enemy just didn't go anywhere. Where's that Tiger P gone? Oh, he's still, he's still trying. Yeah, well, I can afford to take a shot in the side from you. You're two tears down, mate. It's really, really only going to scratch the paintwork. I am a bit concerned about that Conqueror. And I didn't know the hammer was up there. That's me really not keeping an eye on the minimap. Which is probably just as well, because I would have gone straight for Artie. But Artie is taken out with one shot and well I said you can't bully people with this tank well obviously you can when you're two tiers up which is a bit mean and face hugging will hopefully stop this tank doing anything and it would seem not interested in me trying to take another tank out behind me which is quite nice to see because sometimes I can't help thinking that sometimes People are gunning for me. Tank destroyer to the right. I just wonder. Stritzfarn. I just wonder if I can just get it. I didn't want to. <laughs> oh no. Didn't really. Oh, gracefully done. Didn't really want to slip down there. Wanted to stay up top. But it wasn't going to happen. One heavy left. That will teach the team, the enemy team, to not just sit back and wait and defend. This game was all about keeping the momentum and just penning them all in. And it would be quite nice if I could stay alive for this one, not make any stupid mistakes. So E75. We're all going in for the kill and I can't remember if I get another shot in or not. No, I don't. Game over. Victory. Hurrah. And these are very typical of the games I've been having in The Conqueror. And actually, I have been managing to hold back and stay alive quite nicely. Very decent 48,000 silver, 2,800 damage, bit of blocked, and another second class mastery badge. And we managed to come top as well. By no stretch of the imagination am I setting the world alight with this tank. I haven't played heavies for a very, very, very long time. The two heavies I fell in love with were the Tiger II and the T29 and didn't really take any of those any further. Well, actually, yes, I did. I did take the T29 right through to Tier 10 when I think about it. And I got the T110E5 as my first ever tier 10 tank and sold it because I was crapping it and I was not ready for tier 10. The games I've been having in this Conqueror have just been very, I've said it, mediocre. But between you and me, I am falling in love with the Conqueror. You guys said that I would love the Conqueror, and I was determined not to grind it. And I haven't had to grind it. And you guys were right, I do like it. And I'm kind of having a quandary whether I'm thinking, well, if I get the Chieftain, am I going to wish that I'd got the Super Conqueror? Trouble is, I've driven a Chieftain. It's an iconic tank, and I really, really want it. And I haven't really done my research, but my understanding is that it's not quite the bully that the Super Conqueror is, but hold down, it's pretty effective, but it's more manoeuvrable. And that's the one frustrating thing I've found about the Conqueror is its lack of manoeuvrability. I am used to getting myself into a sticky situation and running like the wind with the tail between my legs in a fast tank right to the other side of the map. Just can't do it with this. If you get caught in a sticky situation where you end up reversing because you try and keep your hull forward and keep your hull down and keep your armour forward, you dare turn around and run because you will die. And I have found that bit a little bit tricky to get used to. The fact that you commit 
to a part of the map and basically proceed with it. And this game is, is, is a prime example of coming up to this point and at one stage I thought, we are not going to hold these tanks back. But I stayed there and I saw the game through and it worked. I think, unless you guys say differently, I think, because I think my chieftain's going to come pretty quickly, because as I make this video, we've got the luxury of the times two bonus for the first 20 games that you play, and I've just been playing the Conqueror, so I think it's going to accelerate quite quickly, and actually might even be able to free XP it, but I do like to save my free XP for the grinds when I'm really struggling with a tank and I'm not struggling with this tank so I think that my strategy will be to go for the chieftain as planned but I am not going to sell this conqueror I'm gonna put a brand new crew in it because I don't think I can steal anything from any British tanks that I've got and I'm gonna grind it through again and play for the super conqueror and it won't be a grind well, actually, it might be the new crew, thinking about it, but I enjoy playing this tank. And I think if I play this tank, go and play my Chieftain, and then come back to this tank and play this and the Chieftain, by the time I get to the Super Conqueror, I should be absolutely amazing at playing British Heavies. The videos of the future will be the proof of that. And we shall see what happens. But as I've been playing the Conqueror, apart from not being able to run away when I get myself in a bit of a situation, I've not really missed the light tanks. I have been a victim of the light tanks. I have been surrounded by the stupid little diamonds. And I have been battered by the horrible squares. But generally, when those games haven't happened, even at tier 10 and tier 9 I've I've been enjoying this tank and I found it can absolutely hold itself at tier 10 which is what it's doing in this game and quite often it's top tier at tier 9 and you can pick on the tier 8s and 7s which I'm not going to say is still clubbing because it's way too high a tier but it's obviously taking advantage of being a higher tier tank and that suits me just fine who am I to question the matchmaking so I just had a feeling this was a little bit of a risky manoeuvre because I thought if these two tanks turn round I could be in trouble and I knew the tank destroyer probably didn't have a shot on me although looking at the minimap maybe it could have done but I thought if I don't flank these guys I had a feeling that we could possibly lose this side of the map. And one, sh one more. Sh oh, can I get another shot in the Conqueror? One. Oh, and a shot just whistled over the top of my tank. No idea. Quite probably the TD at C5. But we held our ground. I think flanking really helped our guys. Ooh, can I take out a filthy Borsig? No, it's not a Borsig, is it? It's the Baby Waffle. Sorry, it's tier 9. Yes, we can. Nice. We are going to win this. Time to head down. And yeah, I'm lit up. And I do not want Artie to get a sniff. So I really want to keep on the move. So Artie doesn't get a chance to get a shot in. Three heavies at G1. One heavy and Artie not accounted for. There it is. It's a 103. Now my concern is that Artie now knows where I am. And I just get paranoid. And I want to keep moving. I'm in quite a nice little hold down position here.
is concerned about Artie because one shot from Artie will be enough. Nice shot in the side of the 103's turret. Just going to keep wriggling around just in case Artie is aiming. And keep it on the move. Yeah, I know you need a target. Well, I'm, I'm kind of, there's a 103 over here somewhere. I'll try and light it up again. And I'm managing to do what I wanted to do all along and just get to the side of this building. So I've got a little bit of protection on the left. Focus. Trouble is, where's that 103 gone? Has he gone hull down in there somewhere? There it is. Which way is it looking? It's just nicely. Oh no! Oh, I thought I got the kill for that. I didn't. But it's taken out. Where's Artie? Artie surely is going to be in the puddle at A1 somewhere. That's a real little Artie zone. We are going to win this game. It's not going to be setting the world on fire. Like I said... Quite mundane, normalish sort of games, but quite pleasing games. Artie's taken out. But for me, this one was just playing the tank to its strengths at the beginning, keeping it hull down, stopping the enemy advancing, and even a little cheeky bit of flanking, which I quite enjoyed. A little bit risky, but I can never resist a little bit of risky gameplay. Now, now guys, please don't cap. Please, please don't cap. We don't want to win this by a cap. We have easily got this. That heavy's going to be taking out any minute. One of the guys follows me, but the other stays in the cap. But there's no way, surely, that heavy will survive. Come on, guys. Come on. Get out the cap. Let's see this game through. Well, even if I do get a shot. Oh, I took the shot anyway. You never know. But we win. Now, I didn't achieve an awful lot in that. Eight penetrating hits, three critical, two tanks destroyed, a couple of assisted. Not much on the silver, not bad on the damage, and a very decent 4,000 XP with some missions, and again, another Class 2 Mastery Badge, and managed to come top. I am enjoying the Conqueror, I'm enjoying my British tanks at the moment, and that's kind of where I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay with my Conqueror, get my Chieftain, go back to my Conqueror, get the Super Conqueror, and in between those, I'm going to pay my play my Citroen. Citroen? <laughs> my Centurion AX. <laughs> or the Citroen AX. It must be a French tank after all. What a twat. <laughs> <sighs> keep safe, keep tanking, and I'll see you soon.